Over this past week here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, we've started a new simple tutorial series on Pro Audio. And we've covered the two most common plugs used and balanced audio leads. Well, another viewer has been in touch and asked about speakers. You see, they're left scratching their head because they assumed that speakers are speakers. And to the layperson, that's correct. But in a recording studio, speakers, well, they're not just speakers. In fact, there's actually two types of speakers in a recording studio. You're watching Backyard Tech. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, continuing with our simple tutorial on Pro Audio that we've been going through this week. As we've seen, we've covered two of the most common plugs used, we've covered a balanced audio lead, but this, I wasn't going to get to this until another viewer emailed me about it, and I thought, no, I'll do it today instead. Now, this is from a viewer by the name of Scott, who emailed me on, if I can read that, okay, so early Tuesday morning, my time. Hey mate, been watching your simple tutorial on Pro Audio, enjoying it. I've watched a number of your Pro Audio videos and you've mentioned monitor and reference speakers. Aren't just speakers speakers when it comes to Pro Audio? I'm scratching my head. Um, to a lay person, he's right. The know-it-all experts, you can shut up and not watch this. Because you guys know all about this, so you guys can disappear. This is for those that want an understanding, all right? The know-it-all experts know all this. To a lay person, he is right. Speakers are just speakers. You can't argue that point. To a recording engineer or a sound engineer in a recording studio, speakers are not speakers. Let me explain. In simplistic terminology, and very generally and broadly speaking, without going into all the blinding with science, in a recording studio, there are two types of speakers, which do two, three different functions. And you're probably going to sit there, hang on, old mate. Two sets of speakers, three different functions. That doesn't add up. One set of speakers actually does two functions. Okay, I'm going to use a recording studio that I have done a lot of work in. And I've got two pictures to show you of the two types of speakers. Now, one of my friends in Melbourne will know the, will know the studio I'm talking about. Okay, really well. Okay, you walk into a recording studio. And in front of you is the desk. The recording console, the mixing desk, whatever you want to call it. 24th. 32, 48 odd channel desk. Harrison, SSL, Neve, Mackey, you name it, whatever. Soundcraft if you want. Task cam if you have to. On top of the mixing desk, now I know in some studios there's, you know, two, three, four, five sets of speakers. We're just talking about simplistic terms here. On top of the desk, there will be two speakers. They are the monitor speakers. You have monitor and reference. All right. The monitor speakers are exactly what their name says. They monitor the audio and they have two functions. Okay. The first function a monitor speaker has is to monitor the audio going through the desk. Now, in my case, because I don't add, because I'm a dry record, so no EQ, no outboard dynamics, no, no nothing. It's mic it, record it. Mic it, make it, make the levels right and record it, I should say. I've, I missed a step in there. Mic it, level it, record it. Okay? The monitor speakers are just that. You're listening to everything coming through each of the channel strips you've got turned on. right that's what you're doing you're just listening so as a band is recording 
you're just listening to what's going through the desk. All right, and making notes along the way, you know, halfway through this track, you know, it all works, but the guitar seems to, you know, clip out a bit. Um, need to work on that. This is assuming you're going to mix it yourself or you're handing it off to someone else to mix the track. We'll get into recording and mixing later. So you're just monitoring the sound going through the desk. Now, the other function of a studio monitor, all right, is to listen to what's coming off whatever you're recording. Now, in my case, I've had experience with both 2-inch mag tape and DTRS specific, well, both forms of DTRS. Alesis and Tushcam. Now, in the case of the monitor speakers, in the case of 2-inch, you're monitoring the sound coming back off tape. All right? So you might listen to part of the track that's being recorded. You're hearing everything coming off the desk. You might then switch and say, well, hang on. I want to monitor the sound on tape. I use the, the term loosely speaking. So you're listening to everything coming back off tape. Brackets, hard disk drive. Right? That's what you're doing. They're just monitoring the sound. They're not actually doing anything. You're just monitoring the sound. All right? So to use this analogy, you walk into a recording studio. There's a Harrison 32C. And right sitting atop the meter bridge are two monitor speakers. And the idea of them is you just monitor everything. You're not actively doing anything. You're just listening to the stuff coming through. Okay? That's a monitor speaker. That's all it does. Right. Now, say you walk into the same studio and in the walls are two huge speakers. Now, in my case, the, there was uh, left and right had uh, two two 15-inch drivers and a horn in the left, and two 15-inch drivers and a horn in the right. It was a stereo studio only. It was not a uh, surround sound system. It was just a stereo studio. Now, those speakers in the walls are reference speakers. Now, what are they for? Okay, again, simplistically speaking, to keep this simple, they are the reference speakers of how you and I will hear it through our speakers, for want of a better term. You're referencing how it will sound to us. All right? When you are, I, I don't like mix down. I hate mix down. I've mentioned this before. I prefer to record it, brackets, track it, and then palm it off to someone else to mix it because I hate mixing. A mix down engineer may end up using both a reference speaker, a monitor speaker, and then there's that guy that used to mix on a mono channel. A little four inch mono speaker, because his adage was if it sounds good on a mono speaker, it's going to sound phenomenal off a hi fi. <coughs> Excuse me. So the reference speakers, hang on. I've been outside and the temperature's rising, it's windy, and the dust is all about. And I thought, I'd better stop recording before I sneeze. Now, where was that? Reference. So a reference speaker references how it will sound to us, to a lay person. Now, one of the most famous recording monitor speakers, okay, one of the very famous recording monitor speakers still used today, and I personally like the way they sound as well in a recording studio. Again, the know-it-all experts don't watch this because you know this. This isn't for you. It's amazing how many of the know-it-all experts think they do know the... Ever oh. Camera stalled out again. Let's try that again. As I said, the know-it-all experts know all this stuff so this isn't a video for you guys so you you know it alls can make like a tree and p15 double s off p15 s off anyway now where was i reference speakers so referencing speakers are for monitors studio monitors that's where i was up to sorry the most famous studio monitors around still used today in some recording studios is the 
infamous or famous Yamaha NS10s. I've got a photo of them to show you along with the JBL um, 4000 series reference. But the Yamaha NS10s, now I'll bring a photo. Essentially, they found their way into the recording industry because they're actually a crap speaker. Dynamically, they don't sound very good at all. Now you're going to sit there and say, hang on back here. What are you talking about, old mate? Why, why would you have a speaker that sounds crap in a recording studio? The adage is, if you can make a mix sound phenomenal in a Yamaha NS10, it's going to sound absolutely huge to us listening to it on our hi-fis. That's the adage. If you can make a recording sound fantastic in a Yamaha NS10, it will sound brilliant once it's all mixed and mastered. That's the problem with the NS10s. They are a crap speaker, but for a recording studio, they are phenomenal and they are still very expensive to buy, right? They're, they're not cheap. So the idea is, is that you make a recording sound really good on a Yamaha NS10, and then when you go to mix the track, assuming you're not just recording it, but you're mixing it, it'll sound brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Look, I will say I've had experience with JBL Reference and Yamaha NS10. Okay, not the JBL Reference speakers I'm about to show you, because the reference speakers I used were custom-made JBL systems. What I'm going to show you is reference speakers are actually made by JBL. The studio that I worked in had custom. They bought each speaker. So they bought four 15-inch drivers and two horns. Okay? Which were power amp driven, obviously. I'm not going to freaking try and drive it off of, you know, 25-watt hi-fi amp, are you? So let me bring up the two photos, all right? And I'll show you the difference between a studio monitor and a reference speaker. All right, so on your screen are two speakers. Now, if I zoom in on this one, oops, no, hang on. Let me zoom in a bit. There we go. So here you have the infamous or famous Yamaha NS10s. All right, now these have been around, it may sound a little weird. Yamaha started making these in oh, 1970, it was either 1978 or 79. And if my memory's right, they finished manufacture of them in the early 2000s. I don't exactly know the date. Know it all experts, you'll know. Why are the Yamaha NS10s so popular as studio monitors? Because they're actually a crap hi-fi speaker. Okay. They, they're not a real good sounding speaker and they never really took off. So the NS10s lasted around for argument's sake, some, something, I want to say something along the lines of 20 something years for memory. Okay. And so you, you can pick an NS10, mid bass and a hornish tweeter or a, 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 a piezo-like tweeter basically. And the adage is because these things sound terrible in a recording studio, they actually make really good monitor speakers. The flip side to that is, and they're still used today, there's plenty of recording studios around today that still use the Yamaha NS10s. Companies like Tannoy and Polk and JBL and um, some of the other ones make better speakers. I've used NS10s in the past. The a couple of the studios I've worked in have had NS10s as their monitors. Okay? So that's a monitor. This beast of a thing is the JBL 4350 reference speaker. Now, 
you can see this thing's got a heap of speakers. We've got two bass cones, mid, bass, mid, high, horn, and bass ports everywhere. This is a speaker you would that will basically tell you how it's going to sound after everything is put together. A full range, 20 to 20 frequency range on these things in some cases. Now, I'm not talking about the 4350. I've witnessed the 4350. I've witnessed the clarity of sound out of it. Now, it's an old speaker. Look at it. You're talking about paper cones and everything. Doesn't matter. I think these things are from the mid to late 70s through to the early 80s. I think these things were made. But they are a beautiful speaker. And the idea of a reference speaker, as I said, is to reference how things will sound. So you're in a recording studio. You've got a 32-channel console in front of you. These will be atop the meter bridge, and these are likely to be in the walls. Okay? That's the idea in a simplistic terminology. Now, my two speakers here on the desk are these things big brother. But these are reference-like speakers. They're not reference speakers. They're reference-like speakers. Okay? Now, these and these are both driven off some sort of amplifier. All right? These don't have a great frequency response, but basically they're powered from a power amp because a power amp is just an amp. It's nothing else. Unlike a stereo amp where you've got change of frequencies, change of effects, all this stuff. A power amp just has one thing. It boosts the, you know, the output. So you'll often find in some cases, these are connected to a power amp, these are connected to a power amp, and job done. So this is what you listen to when you're actually recording, brackets tracking, and this is what you'd listen to after the job is done. So hopefully, Scott, that clears it up for you, mate. Um, I know these sound fantastic. These sound phenomenal. These sound like garbage, but if you can make a recording sound really good through them, because of the way they work. So, in simplistic terms, if you can make a recording sound good on a set of Yamaha NS10s, Jam it through that, and it'll sound absolutely phenomenal. So there we are. Monitor, reference. Now, does that mean when you're tracking or recording, you can't listen to it through these? No, of course you can. There's nothing stopping you listening to your recording through a set of reference speakers. There's, there's nothing. You just don't tend to do it. So there we go. Hopefully that helps you out, Scott, and anyone else. There we go. That's it. Have a good one.